So many of us use the internet with its search engines to find information, don't we? Well, there were two students that were having a debate over which was the best of the search engines. And one of them said to the other, I don't like yours at all because it gives me stuff that I really don't need. And the other one said, that's why I use it because so often what I really need is not the stuff I'm looking for. The internet gives us a glimpse of how vast the knowledge of God is by comparison. Infinite knowledge, vastness. We think of God and how bountiful his blessings are. That word bounty I love. As a matter of fact, you and I use that word three times a day, or at least we should, because it's part of the grace that we say before meals, breakfast, lunch, and dinner. Bless us, O Lord, and these thy gifts, which we are about to receive from thy bounty, through Christ our Lord, amen. Bounty means vastness, graciousness, the extravagance of God with his blessings. And in today's gospel, John chapter 6, verses 1 to 15, we hear about the bountifulness of Jesus. He goes up the mountain sits down with his disciples, and all of a sudden there are 5,000 people before him. And he wants to give them something to eat. Gospel says that Jesus already knew what he was going to do, but he wanted to test the faith of the disciples. So he says to them, where can we buy food for all of these people to eat? And Philip, the realist, says in reply, well, Jesus, 200 days wages worth of food wouldn't be enough to give each one a mouthful. Then Andrew, the brother of Simon Peter, says, well, Jesus, I don't know whether this will help or not, but there's a lad here, and he's got five little barley loaves and two fish. And Jesus says, Bring them to me. Now, there's a line in this gospel that comes right next that you've heard again and again that has some deep significance. But it's the kind of a line that just seems like it doesn't mean much, at least at first reading. It comes right here. Jesus says, get the people to recline. And the gospel says, there was a lot of grass in the place, and so the 5,000 men reclined in the grass. Now hold that thought. I'm going to come back to that one. Then Jesus takes the bread and blesses it and has it distributed. And he has the fish distributed. And gospel says, when they all had had plenty to eat, then he told the disciples, take those wicker baskets and gather the leftovers. There were 12 wicker baskets full of bread that was left. The bounty of Christ, the extravagance of God's blessings through his son, they all had had enough to eat, and there was plenty to take home as leftovers. Now, I asked you to keep in mind that Jesus told the people to recline in the grass. Why is that an important line? For this reason. That's exactly what we're doing at this very moment. We're seated. And why? What are we supposed to be doing? recalling the blessings of God 
over this past week? How has God blessed you this past week? And with blessings that led up to this past week. To recall God's bountiful blessings and to be grateful for them. And to have confidence that this coming week and all the time ahead, God is going to continue to bless us bountifully. That we trust that he will. So it's important right now, it's important every day that we take some moments to recline in the grass, to be quiet, to reflect upon the Lord's blessings and be grateful and trust that he will continue to bless us as he knows best. There's one other line in today's gospel that I call to your attention. Another line that can go right over our heads. And it's this. Why did all of those people come to Jesus at the mountainside? The gospel says that they came because they had seen him healing the sick. And that's what they wanted him to do again. But that's not the blessing they got. Instead, he fed them. They got a blessing that they hadn't asked for. And the one they asked for, they didn't get. Why? Jesus had a blessing that was for their good and for ours. He's teaching them throughout John chapter 6, and we're going to be reading today and the next four Sundays, that he is the bread of life. This feeding of the 5,000 was a glimpse of his gift to us in the Eucharist that there is plenty of himself to go around here and throughout the world. And from that moment forward, from the Last Supper to us today and beyond, this is a glimpse of the Eucharist. There are times in our lives, I'm sure, where the blessings that we receive are not always the ones we asked for, right? Sometimes we can miss out on blessings because this is the one that I want. And the Lord offers another one, and we're not paying any attention to that one. This is the one that I want. But that line from that second student rings true. Sometimes the stuff that we really need is not the stuff we're looking for. There was a woman in a small town that was having trouble paying her rent, and her landlord was going to evict her. And some of the people heard about this, and they took up a collection, and one person from that group went to this lady's house and knocked at her door. And he knocked, and he knocked, and he knocked, and he got no answer. Come to find out, the woman was in the house. But she wouldn't answer the door because she thought it was the landlord coming to throw her out. <laughs> the Lord had answered her prayer. But it didn't look to her or sound to her like she expected. Sometimes the stuff that we really need is not the stuff we're always looking for. The Lord was there with an answer to her prayer. And the same thing happens to us. We pray for certain things, but God knows best how to bless and how to answer our prayers. So we reflect on how good, how bountiful God has been to us in the past, and we trust that God will continue to bountifully bless us in the future. And look at the feeding of the 5,000. They got an answer to their prayer, but it wasn't the answer they were looking for. But they got a greater answer to their prayer. And it was such a bountiful blessing that from those five loaves, two little fish, for 5,000 people, 
there were 12 baskets of leftovers when they had all had their fill. So I encourage you today as you're reclining, I encourage you every day to take some time to how the Lord has blessed you recently in the past. Ask the Lord for what it is that you think that you need, but trust that he will bless you as he knows best. <laughs> for sometimes the stuff we really need is not the stuff we're asking for. And take with you the line that we sang in the responsorial psalm, Psalm 145. The, Lord, the hand of the Lord feeds us. He answers all our needs. Three times a day, we offer grace. We thank God for his blessings. I wonder if in your life or in your home life, someone can say that grace before meals in one breath. Ever done it this way? Bless us, Lord, gifts, Bonnie. Pass the gravy, please. Today, when you say grace before lunch, before dinner, take your time with grateful hearts for God's bountiful blessings. Pray as we can do right now before his table of plenty to which we're invited. Let's pray together. Bless us, O Lord, and these thy gifts which we are about to receive from thy bounty through Christ our Lord. Amen.